Hi, hello everybody and welcome to another my anime samurai video. Today we're going to be talking about live action samurai films. I initially had the idea to make a list with uh, 20 films, but I ended up having more than 20, which I hope is not a bad thing for you guys. Okay, let me point out one thing before we start with the countdown. There are two movies, both of them by director Akira Kurosawa, that I didn't include in this list. Why? Well, because I feel that they are not the best ones if you are a beginner new to the samurai genre. Like Kakemusha and Ran, these two films are both masterpieces. You know, visually, it's like amazing work by Akira Kurosawa. Movement and color is just incredible. Like, wow, you'll be shocked with it. But as I say, if you are new to it, you may find the movies a little bit slow and boring okay this is a reaction some people have so i prefer that you get exposed first to some of the movies i include in the list and once you are familiar with it you know that you feel like the genre is something that you enjoy just jump into these two films or at least this is my advice another thing i'm pointing out is that this list is my personal list i'm sure many of you might not agree with it you know and that's completely fine with me i love to hear your comments in the comment section you know Oh, you know, you forgot like this movie. This movie is much better than the other one. Like, great. You know, there are probably many movies out there that I have not seen and I love to hear from them. There's so many samurai movies that I guess it's impossible to know all of them. At least the ones I have here in this list, I think it's around 27, 28 movies that I put in the countdown. I hope that many of you have not heard about them. Okay, another thing to keep in mind before you watch the list is that I'm going to try to keep this spoiler free. Okay, no spoilers. I'll try to. So I'm going to try to summarize to a minimum the information about the movie. So just for you to get a very brief idea. Okay, so let's go. Okay, Bandits vs. Samurai Squadron. This is a very interesting movie. I mean, of course, it's not the best movie ever. But it's fun to watch. Imagine that you have one samurai that quits his uh, clan and he decides to join a group of bandits in order to rob back the castle of his clan. So this is a starting point for, for this movie, which I find is very entertaining. You might get a spaghetti western feeling with this film, you know, although it's a samurai, but it has like this music, you know, like the acting. The story feels very spaghetti western, which is something I find cool. Okay, next one, Samurai Wolf, directed by Hideo Gosha. Everybody knows Akira Kurosawa films and how good he was with the genre, but there were other directors who were actually very good too. One of them is Hideo Gosha, who directed the previous film, Bandits vs. Samurai Squadron, and this one, Samurai Wolf. The story turns around this samurai who arrives to a small village where he meets this blind, beautiful woman who he decides to protect and help. It is a very dark and violent. There is a lot of like plot twists in there. Again, it has a very spaghetti western feeling to it. But keep in mind, it's not a big production. It's a V movie, okay? Very small movie. Machibuse, Incident at the Blood Pass. This is a movie with Toshiro Mifune where he plays for the fourth time the character of Yojimbo, a character that we're going to be talking later on. Okay, there are four movies with this character. This is the last one. But this is not an action movie. This is more like a drama character movie. Uh, of course, it has some samurai action in it, but don't expect a lot of blood and a lot of fighting. Actors are really good in this one. The setting, the art direction is great, you know, and it happens at the mountains, all surrounded by snow. So it's a very interesting movie. Red Lion, again, Toshiro Mifune. This one is not for everybody. It is a dark parody samurai film. It has some elements in there that are very actual, especially how the, this movie portrays politicians. We could perfectly recognize many characters of politicians nowadays in these movies. It's one of these movies that you watch and keeps you thinking afterwards. 
Red Lion, I, I strongly recommend you to watch this one. Hiroshi Nagaki directed this trilogy that tells in three movies the life of one of the greatest samurais ever, Musashi Miyamoto. He was a real character. Okay? And Toshiro Mifune, once again, does a magnificent portrayal of him. Now, these films, these three films, they feel a little bit old, but the fighting scenes are amazing, especially the last one in the third movie. It's just like, wow, like mind-blowing. You have a sunrise. You have the two characters like fighting in the beach. Only for this, you must watch these movies. Hideo Gosha directed Hitokiri, a film about a running who decides to join a new clan with a very ruthless and perverse leader. So the conflict in this film turns around loyalty to your lord versus doing the right thing. It's a film that is beautifully shot, but it's a little bit difficult to follow at times because it has a lot of historical background and you have to be familiar with Japanese history in order to really get everything in the story. But still, it's a good film to watch. When the Last Sword is Drawn it's a very beautiful film about a samurai who has to leave his family behind, wife and kids, in order to find a place to make more money so that he can support them. This movie takes a very interesting look on the human side of the samurai. What is it that he has to sacrifice in order to support his family? And so on and so on and so on. Remember, no spoilers. Samurai Assassin, directed by Kihachi Okamoto. This is a very violent film, but it's nicely shot. Toshiro Mifune has the main role, and the story is based on historical events. Sword of the Beast. This is the story of a samurai who kills a counselor in his clan, so he has to run away and hide in the mountains, where he will meet some interesting characters who are dealing with some gold over there. Okay, I'm not going to tell you anything more, but it's actually a very good movie to watch. The Hidden Blade is not really an action film. It is rather a representation of the samurai culture and the Japanese political structure at the time. We are talking about 19th century. It is a slow one, but very beautifully shot. Goyokin is another samurai action film where the central character, a Ronin, will have to mend fix some of the mistakes he did in the past, and this will involve him facing back some of his old friends and people he loved and he used to be related in his old clan. After the Rain is a very nice story based on an Akira Kurosawa script and tells the story of a samurai, a very nice and gentle samurai that in order to pay back one of his debts, he has to go from dojo to dojo fighting samurais there in order to get money and pay back his debt. The 47 Running is one of the most famous Japanese stories. I mean, there are many versions of this film. I will actually recommend this one and the one with Toshiro Mifune from 1962. These two are the really good ones. The other ones, I don't feel them. It is the story of 47 Running who tried to clean and bring back the honor of their lord who had to commit harakiri. The Hidden Fortress is one of Akira Kurosawa's most famous films. Maybe because it's been said many times that it was an inspiration to George Lucas when he wrote Star Wars. Especially if you read the first draft of Star Wars, you'll find so many similarities. But yeah, let's focus on the movie. The movie is fun to watch, you know, it has action, it has comedy in it, it has tension, suspense, like, it's really worth watching adventure film, definitely. The Twilight Samurai, this is a very slow and beautiful film about how it is to be a samurai and have to take care of your family, especially when you are a poor one. But it's more about learning about how did the samurais live at that time and how it is to be a father and have to take care of your kids. Lone Wolf and Cap, this is a must watch for anyone, but it is very violent, okay? This is the kind of movie when the sword cuts and the blood is splashing all around, okay? Just keep that in mind. My favorite movie is the second one. The second one of these movies, Baby Cart at the River Sticks, has influenced many filmmakers. 
I don't know if you're familiar with John Carpenter, but if you have watched Big Travel in Little China, you will find some characters very familiar. Sanjuro is another great film that you should watch. Directed by Akira Kurosawa, this is the second part of Jojimbo. And it's one of these movies that has a lot of plot twists, turns around, it is fun to watch. Uh, it, it's, one, it's a classic. It's a classic, definitely. The new Ruronic and Shin trilogy. Why did I put it so high? Maybe it's because I like the anime, but I actually enjoy a lot of the movies. Again, they are not the best ones ever, maybe, but that's my personal choice. I enjoy them a lot, okay? So this is why they are so high. Ruronic and Shin. Throne of Blood. Wow. Definitely an incredible film by Akira Kurosawa. It is based on Macbeth. The end will stick with you for very, very long time. It's just impressive, the end of this movie. The images are so... Wow. So shocking, basically. 13 Assassins. This movie is heavy metal, honestly. It just starts slow, but when it reaches the action moment, it's just like heavy metal non-stop. Like, wow, really crazy stuff. I love it, honestly. It's just like such a punch of adrenaline. If you like action movies, this is for you. Kill. It is based in the same story as Sanjuro is, but it has a very different approach to it. Very interesting are the two main characters in the story who brings a very, very peculiar duality to what happens on the screen. The Three Outlaws Samurai. This is what you will really expect from samurai entertaining. Action, comedy, drama, morals, honor. One of my favorite ones. Samurai Rebellion. This is another big wow. Very serious film about samurai, family, honor, revenge, Friendship, really one of these movies that you cannot stop watching. Really, really intense film, and it goes really deep on you. Sword of Doom. This is a very cool movie. This is not about good guys. This is about a psychopath, a very bad guy, samurai, who just moves around doing what he wants and killing whoever he wants. But it has some of the most iconic and beautiful shots and scenes in samurai films. It's just a must see, don't miss it, honestly, don't really miss it. Tale of Satoshi. Satoshi is a very famous character in Japanese pop culture. He is the blind samurai. I'm sure you have heard about him. If I'm not wrong, there are 13 movies. There is even a Satoshi meets Jojimbo, Jojimbo the character from Sanjuro. There is even a remake by Takeshi Kitano, which is actually a very good movie. You know, it's actually worth watching. I'm not including it separately from the Satoshi universe in this line. But yeah, just watch it. So The Tale of Satoshi is actually the first movie of the series. And actually, my personal opinion is the best one by far. Because it has some of the most beautiful scenes. There is a very, very, very unique and nice scene happening when Satoshi goes fishing and he meets another samurai in there. It's like so good, so well done in there. There's a lot of action, of course, in Satoshi. Jojimbo is just a fantastic movie. Just so much entertaining, so much fun in it. It's smart, there is action, entertaining, some humor on it. Great, great movie. To the point that Sergio Leone decided to rip off the story and make a Western, a spaghetti Western called A Fistful of Dollars which is completely, I will say, like 90% or 80% based on Jojimbo. Harakiri. This movie is a masterpiece at all levels. Visually, storytelling, action, everything in here is just fantastic. There is a remake from 2011, if I'm not wrong, which is actually good too. But I will stick with the original one, which is like incredible. The acting is like fantastic in there. And as everybody will have guessed, the first one goes for Seven Samurai, Akira Kurosawa. I guess that everybody, when they think about samurai films, the first thing that comes to their mind is actually this movie. It's just a masterpiece at all levels. And the story is so, so really good and has influenced so many other filmmakers and storytellers afterwards. 
Well, I hope that you enjoyed the list and that you found some movies that you have never heard about before. Let me know what you think about it down in the comment section. And that's all for today. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and bye bye.